Hello, Chris Potts here. This screencast is a high-level overview of our assignment plus bake-off called FewShot OpenQA with Colbert Retrieval. My goal is to give you a sense for the task of FewShot OpenQA and review what's in the rather large notebook. By the way, the notebook is really large so that it is highly portable and self-contained. We're imagining that many of you will want to work with it on Google Colab or on a temporary cloud instance, and so we've tried to ensure that you can just copy the notebook into one of those places and run it, assuming the setting has the right kind of core Python infrastructure. Okay, before we dive into the notebook itself, I think it would be good to do a brief overview of question answering tasks in general. This will allow us to build up to the extremely ambitious task we're confronting, FewShot OpenQA. So in its modern incarnation, the core task of question answering, or QA, works like this. We're given a passage in a question, and the task is to answer the question, and we have a guarantee that the answer will be a literal substring of the passage. It's important to keep track of what's given here. So for training, we're given the passage, the question, and the answer. And at test time, we're given the passage and the question. And hovering in the background there is that guarantee that the answer will be a substring of the passage. And finally, in general, we're going to train our system specifically for the QA task. In other words, we'll train a task-specific reader module that, given a passage and a question, learns to find the answer string in the passage. Our next level up in difficulty is OpenQA. In OpenQA, we're no longer given the passage. Rather, we have to retrieve the passage from somewhere, presumably from a large collection of documents or even the web. This is substantially harder than regular QA because in losing the passage, we also lost the guarantee that the answer will be a substring of the passage. In this setting, for training, we're given just question-answer pairs. And at test time, we get only a question from the data set and everything else has to be either retrieved or predicted. We can use the same sort of reader as we used for regular QA, but now that reader is going to be totally stuck at test time if the retriever fetches a passage that doesn't contain the answer as a substring. So without a great retriever, even the best reader is going to be in real trouble for OpenQA. Our next task is different still. This is FewShot QA. And notice this is FewShot regular QA, not OpenQA. We're not yet at our full task. Here, we're going to use a pure language model, and there will be no task-specific training. Rather, we're going to prompt the language model with passages, questions, and answers to show it what we want in a way. And we're going to hope that it generates an answer to the unanswered question that we placed at the bottom of the prompt. Since this is regular QA, we can draw the examples and our target item from gold data. And so we're back to having a guarantee that the final prompt passage will contain the answer that we want as a substring. But now we don't get to train the system at all. So we just have to hope that it knows in a way what we want it to do with these prompts that we've constructed. It has to, in a way, learn from these few examples or learn in this very particular tiny context about what we want it to do. This is the mode of experimentation used for, the, for QA in the famous GPT-3 paper, and they showed there, to everyone's surprise, I think, that they could get traction on this task as posed in this way. Pretty remarkable. But we're going to go even further to really push the limits of what today's pre-trained systems can do. That brings us to our task, FewShot OpenQA. This combines the hard aspects of all the previous settings. So as with OpenQA, we need to retrieve passages, and so we have no substring guarantees. And as with FewShot QA, you don't get to train any components of the system to do your task specifically. As you do your development, you get question-answer pairs, but you can't train on them. You can just kind of explore what's possible. And then at test time, all you're given is a question as input, and you have access to a large corpus and other resources, and you can use them to try to get your system to give you good answers. Right? You construct a prompt in whatever mode you like, pulling things from your resources, and you hope that your system figures out in a way what you want it to do and has relevant data in the prompt to succeed at what you're implicitly asking with these prompts. Sound impossible? Well, I think you'll see that you can do this pretty well. So let's dive into the notebook now. The overview reviews what I just said about our tasks and it offers this summary table where we've defined the tasks in terms of whether the passage is given and whether we can train the reader. There's a third dimension to this that's less settled, I would say. Is the retriever trained specifically for the domain we're in? 
For the assignment, we're presuming you'll work with frozen Colbert retriever parameters that we're distributing, but we've included a few hints about retriever training at the bottom of the notebook, and we have evidence from our own work that task-specific retriever training can help in the pure OpenQA setting. Let's move now to the setup. As I said earlier, to help with setup, we've got all these special pip installs here. If you're firing up a cloud instance or a collab, this will help you get going. And we've verified that this is all it takes for collab and for EC2 instances on Amazon that come with a modern PyTorch Anaconda environment to get this notebook running. Then there are some cells that will help you take advantage of GPU support if it's available. Again, we've verified that this notebook works fine on a regular laptop without GPU support for deep learning. It's slow, slow, slow if you decide to rely on the Eleuther models, since those are very large. Um, but GPU support is actually totally unnecessary and goes largely unused if you decide to rely on GPT-3. In that case, all the hard computation is, I guess, done on some OpenAI supercomputer somewhere. Next are some general setup steps, and the third section here is for the language models. This will install the OpenAI tools, and these other pieces relate to the Hugging Face Transformers library. Finally, Colbert setup. Colbert is our retriever. I'm going to take for granted that you know what Colbert is all about. Omar did some excellent screencasts that provide a lot of context around these neural IR models in general and Colbert in particular. This command will pull the CPU inference branch from GitHub uh, for Colbert, and then we import the relevant pieces. And now we are set up. Let's look at the two main language models that we'll consider. These are the, our major components in our system. We're offering interfaces for two classes, really. The first uh, are the Eleuther models. Eleuther has released a variety of GPT-2 style models in a variety of sizes. And you can also instead, if you want to, rely on GPT-3 style models that OpenAI provides access to. And I'll return to this later, but I want to emphasize that for the original system in Bake Off, you have to use a regular autoregressive language model with no additional training. The full list of pre-allowed models is given later in the notebook, and we want you to ask permission if you want to go outside of that list. This answer hood function just does a bit of pre-processing. We're baking in the requirement that the answer is the first line of new text generated by whatever model is in use after the prompt. But defining precisely what that first line idea means is a bit tricky given the things these models tend to produce. So this function kind of centralizes all those fiddly details. Next, run Eleuther is our main interface to the Eleuther models, which come in a variety of sizes. And there are lots of keyword parameters that you can fiddle with for these models. My one warning is that for Google Colab, the biggest model that we got to work on an unpaid Colab account was the 1.3 billion parameter model. Uh, the larger ones will require really serious GPU support. And that can get expensive fast if you use the largest and best of these models, GPTJ, which has around 6 billion parameters. Here's a quick demo of run Eleuther. Uh, next is GPT-3. The interface is run GPT-3. To use it, you need to sign up for an OpenAI account. And that should give you $18 in free credits, which is more than enough for this assignment, assuming you're careful with testing. Once your account is set up, you can get your API key from your account dashboard and paste it in uh, as the value of this API key variable, and then you should be all set. Before you do any of this, please first verify that your account is set up with a spending limit that you're comfortable with. If you just opened your account, you should have $18 in credit, and so you won't need to supply any payment information. But if you already supplied payment information, then do set a spending limit. It's easy to get carried away with testing and accidentally spend like $100, especially if you switch from the Curie engine that we've got as the default to the best and most expensive one, the DaVinci engine. Okay, now to Squad. We're going to use Squad entirely for development. Our Bake Off dataset has no overlap with Squad. Um, yeah, our test set is just a list of new questions. But using Squad will let us leverage its gold data to test baselines and sort of oracles and things like that. And it should be a pretty good guide to Bake Off performance. I actually think Squad in the open formulation is somewhat harder than our Bake Off data set. So this code loads in Squad's training data and its dev set. Uh, the next section here is evaluation. Uh, we just copied in the code that the community uses for Squad evaluations and evaluations on related tasks. The core of this is that we assess systems according to exact match with the answer 
and token level F1 with the answer. And we're gonna focus on the F1 value since it provides more of a signal for hill climbing in our difficult domain. And here's a toy example of how all this works, just for reference. Okay, now we can begin building some baseline systems to get, it, to get a feel for the problem. Our first system is what we've called open QA with no context. This is just the very naive approach where we simply feed the question text in as the prompt and hope that the model provides an answer as the first line of its generated text. This isn't particularly fair to the model since it doesn't unambiguously convey what we want it to do, but it's a start. The function evaluate no context is in a format that you'll see a lot and work with a lot. Uh, you give it some squad examples, a gen func, and a batch size, and it does all the generations we want and runs an evaluation for you. The output of this function is the output of the function evaluate, which was given earlier, and it has lots of data in it, including a key macro F1 that is our overall metric. So here you can see that the 125 million parameter Eleuther model didn't do so well, whereas GPT-3 with the Curie engine got some traction. Next system, FewShot QA. This should provide a sort of upper bound for our task since it's our task but with gold passages provided by squad. Uh, so here we write, write some code to construct prompts uh, like the one you see here. The first examples are pulled from the squad train set and the final one is one of our dev examples and the hope is that the model will continue this prompt with an answer to that last question. The markup used here is modeled on what they did in the GPT-3 paper, but I don't know that it's optimal or anything. Minor changes in prompts can have major consequences. The one thing I can say with confidence is that you should make absolutely sure that there isn't a space or new line or anything at the end of your prompt. For some reason, this matters a lot to these models. To put all this into action, we have another evaluate function that uses our prompt formatting function. And here you can see that while the smallest Eleuther model is still struggling, this is a strikingly easy task for the GPT-3 engine, even using the older and less expensive engine that we're using here. It's pretty remarkable. But don't get used to this incredible success. This is a kind of oracle where we get all gold passages, and our OpenQA variant doesn't have gold passages for target questions. The next section here introduces the other major modeling component required for our task, the Colbert Retriever. We first fetch the pre-trained Colbert parameters, and then we fetch a pre-created index that's nicely aligned with squad and with our bake-off data. And we load into all this into a searcher instance, and then you get to do regular queries if you want to into the index using Colbert, as you can see here. And to round this out, we thought it would be good to show you how to do a simple retriever evaluation using success at K. Right, we say we have a success at K if a passage in the top K retrieve passages contains any of the answer substrings. And success at K is the percentage of such success cases. And you'll see that our retriever gets around 86 here on both our dev examples and on all of squad. So that's good. Success is pretty high. And so retriever uh, success shouldn't be a total bottleneck here, depending on how you use the retriever to construct your prompts. With Colbert now loaded in, we can do OpenQA with Colbert. In the standard version, we simply pull a passage using Colbert with the question as the query and format that into one of our standard prompts. This isn't yet few shot since we don't provide examples in the prompt. A homework question below asks you to do the proper few shot thing and it's at that point that you really have your first complete system for our actual task. Good. So those are the example and baseline systems, and we hope you have a sense now for the landscape of ideas. Let's look briefly at the homework questions. The first question asks you to return to the first baseline system where we simply prompted the system with a bare question and construed the generated text as the answer. As I said, this is arguably unfair to the model since we didn't convey anything about our intentions. So here we move to a few shot version where you write code to create prompts like the one you see here, with QA pairs as examples. So you write the prompt function and an evaluation function. Those are the two tasks. And both of those functions have unit tests that you can use to iterate toward the required implementations. Our next question is the first complete system, few shot open QA at last. You write a prompt function that uses a question, a passage, and a sample of squad training examples to use as example passages in the prompt, and you write an evaluation function. And as before, we've got you covered with some unit tests. 
The final regular question is answer scoring, and this is meant to suggest a whole range of things you can do in parallel with specific design choices around prompts. In this question, you make basic use of the scores returned by the Colbert Retriever and the scores returned by the language model to figure out how to rank the prompts that you're creating. And we've seen in our own work that scoring functions like this can give you a major boost in performance. For the question itself, you just need to write get passages with scores for fetching and softmax normalizing Colbert scores, and the second function answer scoring that brings those Colbert scores together with the language model scores. And we've given unit tests for each of those. You don't need to run an evaluation, but we're thinking you might be tempted to do that in the context of an original system. Yeah, and to round this out, your original system. I believe the only rule we need to impose is this one. The language model must be an autoregressive language model. No trained QA components can be used. Our list of pre-allowed models are those available via the OpenAI API, whose names begin with text, and the Eleuther models, GPT-NEO 125, GPT-NEO 1.3 billion, GPT-3-NEO 2.7 billion, and GPT-J. If you would like to use a model outside of the set, please check with the teaching team first. We've given a lot of ideas here for things you can try outside of choosing a model. Trying any one of them would be a challenging act, and combining two of them would certainly be enough to earn full credit for an original system, no matter how the resulting system performs. The instructions for formatting the system are the usual ones, as you can see here. And finally, there's some starter code for how to create a bake-off entry. It should work to embed your system in the middle of this function here. And do make sure you pass these quick tests with the list gens that you create, otherwise your entry is sure to fail. And that's it. This is the purest form of question answering we can really imagine. You have a question text and that's it. Can you get Colbert plus a language model to correctly answer these questions for you without any task specific training? That is the challenging question posed by FewShot OpenQA.